due to COVID-19, it wasn't uh, possible for us to meet like this. But we thank God for the innovation so far that we are able to come together via the virtual uh, platform. Before COVID-19, many of us uh, don't use this uh, means of uh, communication. But today now it is possible for you to stay wherever and uh, attend the lectures without stress from the comfort from your comfort zone. If we ask people to travel around the, and meet us in the, at a particular venue, I don't think it will be possible. But using this platform, you can see that uh, those that are, are yet, we have over 800 that are yet to join us because uh, we are close to a thousand that will meet on this platform today. So you can see that it is very convenient and affordable too. The theme of uh, today's uh, presentation is on effective change management. This training would equip the participants with skills, knowledge needed to assess, plan, and successfully implement and sustain large-scale business changes. We all know that the environment is hostile and clustered now. As professional managers, we must uh, do the right thing. We must do things rightly. There are many forces militating against our environment today. We must analyze uh, their strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threat and strength and threats. That is why participants at the end of uh, this uh, presentation will be able to gather the knowledge needed to assess, plan, and successfully implement and sustain large scale business uh, changes. This training is free to all members and non-members of the Institute. It is in line with the mandate of promoting a vibrant learning environment. Based on researches, continued professional training and retraining in order to improve, develop, maintain, and disseminate the secret of business success to those who earnestly seek for it, either by the study or practice of its ethical principles and by so doing, raise professional practice to its highest level. Sakorede is here with us to do justice to the team of uh, today's uh, Comet uh, workshop. The moderator has already been uh, highlighted you can uh, understand that uh, when this uh, we are we are we are up to we are over 8000 members across the country at the moment i could remember when this institute started in 2009 and i was registered as number 001 i told myself then that when god created man man was alone and today we have uh, over 8.8 billion people 7.8 billion people across the globe in the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria, we are over 8,000 at the moment. And by the time we get up to 10,000 members, our bill shall be on the, its way to the National Assembly. And uh, there is no how we can function when our members are not standing with us. If all members are paying uh, their membership uh, dues, then uh, the institute uh, will, perform, uh, will perform optimally. The annual subscriptions, is only a few members that have been uh, meeting up in that uh, area, but uh, we want to urge all our members to do things rightly. 
for the associate members, it is 5,000 Naira. The full members is 7,000. While for the fellows, it's 10,000 at the moment. You can pay into the account of the institute and send the, as, and send the, the info to us to follow up. The membership drive. We want every member of the institute to tell others that are yet to join the institute about the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria. Let them know that if, if, if it is not Panadol, it cannot be like Panadol. We want to increase from strength to strength. Let our members be in every nook and cranny of the country. Let us lead for others to follow. We are also in collaboration with the African Institute of Strategic Managers in Ghana, of which the Institute uh, of Professional Managers and Administrators of Nigeria is coordinating the, the affairs of ISIM Ghana. As I earlier stated, today is not a speech making day. I will once again welcome each and every one of you for honoring our invitation to be on this platform today. Thank you all and God bless you. Thank you, sir, for that um, short address. Though it is short, but um, well um, articulated. Thank you. And um, I think the next um, thing we are going into fully now will be the next phase we are going into fully now will be the um, on the paper of the day, the topic of um, the workshop, which is um, effective um, change management. As we all know, change is one in life that is always constant. Even this platform here we are today is as a result of change that has made us in this part of um, the world to also key into the usage of um, online um, learning today. Though it was um, COVID-19 initially that has opened our eyes to this platform, but presently now there are other situations as well burning situations at hand that has made us to even stick to it and than um, the COVID-19 that made us to realize that yes, we have been doing things without um, moving from the archaic way of doing it all this while as a result of uh, responding change effectively. And as a manager, that is what one thing that is expected of us, our ability to adapt and uh, react and to adapt to any given change within our organization. Our inability to adapt, to react and adapt to change at times leads to the end of um, our organization. And like our registrar has always emphasized on that as a manager, we should always be the last to be hired an organization. Because if Ed, as a manager, you are heading an organization, that organization is within The first thing they will ask is which professional body does this manager belongs to? Which professional body does he or she belongs to? As a result of that, it's, it becomes a big blow on the professional body. At times, it might not even be the fault of the professional body, but the negligence and the inability of um, the manager to think outside the box. So how we can manage, effectively manage the change that we don't have um, power over, knowing fully well that change is constant. Today, we might sleep thinking that um, it's going to be a sunny day tomorrow. And before you know, it turns out to be a rainy day with serious flood. How can we react and manage it effectively? 
I will not want to start lecture even before the facilitators of um, the paper in persons of uh, Mr. Ebenezer Koride, I believe in the next one and a half hours or thereabouts, he will be able to do justice to the um, effective um, change management. Mr. Koride, over to you, sir. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Registrar, um, uh, please. Sorry, sir, Mr. Koride, before you continue, uh, Mr. Registrar, I'd like to enable the share screen button so that um, Mr. Koride will be able to share the screen with us. Thank you. All right, sir, over to you, Mr. Koride. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it has still not been enabled for the screen share. Okay. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, uh, the screen share is being enabled. I just want to warmly welcome you today to the June comet of ITMA. Um, ITMA is an opportunity and a privilege and we thank God for those of us that are members or fellows that uh, we have that opportunity and privilege to be members because we can share ideas, we can discuss, we can analyze, we can forage, we can make a lot of discoveries. Um, one of the purpose for attending fora, a fora, uh, fora like this is to renew or reinforce the things that we know prior to this time. We need to learn and relearn. And sometimes we need to unlearn so that we can relearn. Learn, unlearn, and relearn. But another very important reason is also to discover new knowledge, friends, new things that um, we may not get off. We know that every day uh, new information is coming out. Um, we have over uh, over a hundred thousand news channels in the world today. And of course, it's not possible for any single individual, no matter the resources available for you to keep up, you know, because we have such a limited time. We have just 24 hours. If you multiply that 24 hours by 60, you tell me the number of minutes that we have, we multiply that by another 60, you get the number of seconds that we have. And you can multiply that even by seven to give you in a week and in a month and up to a year. And so we are limited. So new discoveries can only be shared, you know, piece by piece in fora like this. Then, of course, the third reason for attending a fora like this is to remind yourself of the things you have forgotten. Things you probably learned in school or you read about somewhere, but you have forgotten about them. So we remind ourselves, you know, in a light-hearted way, in a not so formal uh, way, so that we can begin to apply them. So, and that is why we want to talk about change management today. Uh, to keep these three, these three ideas in mind, because you can reinforce some current practices that you're already implementing, that you have already adopted, that you already use. Make new discoveries. You can make new discoveries, learn new things. Number three is that we can remind 
our some of the important targets that we have for and that uh, we are all here as program managers. Um, our brain is not just reading, but um, discussing and then experimenting with the things that we are engaging in. Engagement is very important. You read or you discuss, and then you practicalize. And then when you practicalize, you practicalize without fear, because you know that failure is not final. It, it's a joyful experience, okay? So you, you will understand that um, anything that you want, there can be a process, a method to, to it. Now, um, we have this simple objective. Within the next uh, one hour uh, and thereabout, um, we want to be able to ensure that the participants should be able to define change and change management. We should be able to mention some principles of change and then enumerate or list from set to effective change management. And then mention tips of successful change management. And then we're also going to have, um, let me say, I'll call it a takeaway or uh, a bonus, you know, where we can cast our mind on what we can do with this knowledge. Um, for a start, I want to keep our notebook handy and I'm going to ask a simple question. Why change? So write it down so that by the time we begin to discuss, it will be um, not what it is, something that you can be able to repair and restrain. Why change? Now, we know that in life, we can act as individuals. We can act as a group. There is a saying that if you want to go fast, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go. If you want to go far, if you want to go far, go together. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, travel together. Because, like science has been able to prove, the ability of someone that has an IQ of 70 and someone that has an IQ of 120 intellectually are not the same. However, the good news is that what we call the winning age is that if you have an IQ of 120 and you constantly sharpen yourself, you have the same chance in terms of the law of average and probability of eating the zenith of whatever profession that you are, just as much as somebody that has an IQ of 160, 150, 140, 180. And that is why, as professional manager, it's very important for us to take this serious. Now, I want us to be saying that which got us to where we are is not very likely to get us where we want to go. If you are, if you are a Nigerian or an African, we can relate to various experiences. We have what we call in the National Assembly of Nigeria, the heroes of our, I mean, the labors of our heroes 
the labors of our heroes past. And then when you bring down that home to yourself, you can say the labors of yourself, of your forebears, the labors of our ancestors. But we must quickly also realize that it also includes the labors or the efforts and errors of our ancestors. So in other words, it brought us to where we are, must continually try to develop on it so that we can get to a better destination. As the popular saying goes, you cannot do things the same way you have been doing it and you expect a different result. You must get the same result. However, if you want to go somewhere, that means you want to get a different result. That's why we say that which goes us to where we are is not very likely to get us to where we want to go. Because where we want to go is different, is higher, is better, is, is safer than where we are. So if we are here now and we want to go further, then we must change strategy. That is why we mean what we mean by that. Now look at this. This is a simple food for thought. People usually support improvement. It's change they don't like. They all love to be in a comfort zone. People want improvement. They want improvement physically. You know, they want um, like let me take physical for instance. People want to have six parts. Uh, if you are a lady, you want to have the right body figure. If you are a man, maybe you feel your tummy is a bit protruding. You want to work on on them and all that. Most people are not willing to make the little effort, the little sacrifice required to make, to achieve that improvement. Some people, by the beginning of January, they will sit down and make what they call New Year resolution. And then by the ending of February, poof, the resolution has disappeared, it's gone. So people want improvement. They want the things, the better, People, for instance, want to score all A's, but the effort to make that change, they need to be disciplined. Uh, we used to talk about discipline and motivation. Motivation is important because it gives you the reason for moving forward. But discipline is superior to motivation. Discipline. Mr. Correde, you can uh, unmute. I've muted everyone. I, please, uh, for us to get uh, the, the best out of uh, what is uh, being presented, uh, enable to mute your microphone, please. You are disturbing the house. Okay, Mr. Thank you very much. Please, when you want to make a comment, you can press Alt plus uh, A. Or just temporarily press on your computer button, press the space bar or mute. Otherwise, please let us all stay muted so that we don't have uh, distractions. It's just within one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. Well, thank you very much. So I said, I was just talking about the difficulty between motivation and discipline. Motivation gives you the reasons to want to achieve, while discipline keeps you going to achieve. If you are motivated but you are not disciplined, it is likely that you are going to fall short of that of, of what you want to achieve. The, the change, the process, the difficult, the sacrifice. And they don't. Uh, Khalid, Khalid, please put your microphone on mute, please. Mr. Khalid, please, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Then another okay. statement here is there is nothing permanent except change. If you look at this statement very well, you will realize that it's like um, a double entry. There is nothing permanent. That is one part. 
and then accept change. So when we say there's nothing permanent and then you say accept change, it's like a reinforcement of the previous idea because change means something that is able to vary in its shape, in its effort, in its value, in its characteristics, in its properties, in its time, in its duration. So when we say nothing is permanent except change, we're using that statement to re-emphasize that change is a constant. Now, let's do quickly look at these nuggets before we dive in deeper. One of the most respected uh, leaders in the world today who uh, is known to be a freedom fighter responsible for his nation, the nation of India, was Mahatma Gandhi. And he gave us this statement, he said, be the change you want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world. This presentation, we're going to look at effective change management uh, in terms of organization. And then we will now dovetail it into, in terms of individuals, in terms of individuals. Okay, that will be part of the uh, assignment we're going to have. Now, Leo Tolstoy says, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. This is like a corollary to the Chinese proverb that says, if everyone should sweep the front of their house, the whole world will be clean. If everyone should sweep the front of their house, the whole world will be clean. If every human being, every animal sweep the front of their house, all tidying up everywhere, the whole world will be clean. So change, another nugget is change is a constant. That's a, a, a follow-up on the first uh, assertion that we made earlier, that is nothing permanent except change. And then I alone cannot change the world but I can cast a stone across the water to create many ripples. Sometimes we feel so insignificant. We feel so powerless as a change agent. Somebody asked me a, a, a question recently. The person was trying to ask me in, when I thought about it, he was trying to ask me, what have you achieved? what have you achieved in life you know and and then initially i was tempted to begin to list uh, maybe maybe my, uh, maybe my asset and all that and I, I i thought about it i said no this person is asking me have i met my goals have i met my individual goals have i met my family goals i may feel i'm successful as an individual but the people my dependents around me, are they happy? Are they successful? The society in which I live, are they happy because of me? Have I made any impact? Is it, it, it give me food for thought? And that's what Mother Teresa is saying here. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the water to create many ripples. When you throw any object into a still water, and it drops, boom, you see the flickering waves of the water. Sec you know, it's like rings, a, a, a circle of rings or rings of circles, you know, moving outward. It moves outward. If you drop another one, you know, if rain is falling and you are by the lagoon or you are by the pond or a lake, it's, you, you can see the beautiful effect when the rain starts falling before it starts um, coming in torrents. By the first drop of rain, you see the raindrop enters, you see the ripples, it flows, and then another drop, it flows, another drop, it flows. So that little effort, that book that you say you want to write, that project that you say you want to start, write it down. We have limited time. The time we have is limited, and it means we have very little effort 
But the truth is that as funny little human beings, we are very powerful. Look at the people that create the things that we call trends today. Some of them never imagined that just by a little drama, a little book, a little statement that they made somewhere, they could go viral. Even though you alone cannot change the world, you can force to break up. A small group of powerful people can change the world. A small group of thoughtful people can change the world. And then we think churches. And then to be perfect is to change often. That means perfection is a moving target. You cannot attain it. But to be perfect, you keep changing, you keep, ad you keep adapting. You know, you are proactive, you cannot reactive. A reactive person, and then he, 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 he does what he, he feels is necessary. It's like driving a car without a fire extinguisher. When you drive a car without a fire extinguisher, you think you, you are enjoying yourself or you are beating the law enforcement until just one little spark happens and you see people rush out to help you and they bring out their fire extinguishers and you know they attack the fire and it dies that's when you say wow but what has happened can we please move can we mute ourselves Thank you. So the, the fire came in after the fire had started and you didn't even have. That is reactive. That is a reactive behavior. It means just like somebody who waits for the car to break down before he changes the oil, he doesn't anticipate. So but to change often means that you are proactive. You think through, you go forward for every encounter, for every transaction. You look at it in terms of outcomes, results, returns, benefits to all that are concerned. So to improve is to change, to be perfect is to change often. That is from the Commander of the Allied Forces in the Second World War, a member of the British Parliament, who at one time was banned for speaking to uh, the Commission, was forbidden because they felt his utterances were against the government. And eventually he became the Prime Minister of Britain. His name. Then you also have this nugget from Oman. You cannot change what you are, only what you do. He said, there's a saying that says, watch your thoughts because they become what? They become what you speak. They become your words. Watch what you say because it, it influences what you, what you do. Not in the in the know. And watch what you do, it becomes your habit. Watch your habit, it becomes your character. So from your thoughts and what you say, you can begin to modify so that eventually you can be the person that you are. We're all working progress. We all are work in progress. If you have a PhD today, you will realize that you still want to achieve more. One of the most brilliant philosophers of all time says, I, I am the wisest person alive. And people were shocked. And then he said, yeah, because I know that I know nothing. He said, I am the wisest person alive because I know that I know nothing. 
And then Mary Shelley says, nothing is so painful to the human mind as a great and sudden change. That is why sometimes you see people resist change, especially when it is not anticipated. You can be a spectator or you can be a change agent. You can be a victim or you can be a change leader. Let's go further. So what is change management? First of all, what is change? Change is a process of transition of qualities and attributes from one form to another. Change is a process of transition of qualities and attributes from one form to another or from one state of being to another. For instance, once I was blind, now I can see. Once I was sick, now I am healed. Once I was poor, now I am rich. Once I, am, I was ignorant, but now I can know. Or now I know. I'm aware. So change is that transition effect, that process from one state of being to another. That change the attributes, the qualities from one state of being to another. And change management is an approach to transitioning individuals teams and organizations to a desired future state. In a project management context, change management refers to a project management wherein changes to a project are introduced and approved. Another way we can look at change management is the leadership process of motivating people from one stage of achievement to a better or a desired state of achievement. Is a leader, there is a, a, a leadership process of changing people, or moving them from one state of achievement to a higher or a better state of achievement. So you can apply it in human resource management, in the context of what we are now, you can apply it as a professional manager. You can apply it as a project manager, where we say it is the part where changes are introduced and approved. For every change in project management, we want to know who is initiating this change. Does the person have the level of authority and clearance required to initiate this change? It is very important. What is the reason for this change? And so on and so forth. So, then why change? Why do we need change? Without standing too academic, all of us in one state, in one form, or in one situation or the other, we feel we need change. We say the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. The Japanese, the Chinese, the Americans, everybody have realized the importance of change whether at the micro level or at the macro level, whether for the short term or for the long term, whether for the short term, mid term or long term. And everybody is keeping their eyes on the goal. Nobody uses the chair and just goes to rest that, oh, this is, I've invented a, a chair. You can sit on it. It has a place, a, a part where you can sit on. It has a backrest. Sorry, sir. Apology to button. 
Okay. Apology to Button, sir. Uh, Mr. Right. Khalid, please kindly mute your microphone, please. The background noise from your end is um, too much. Thank you. Please, Thank you for much. anyone who notes that um, his, mic his or her microphone is on, so as far as you are not saying anything, please kindly put it on uh, mute for us to have a um, calm conversation. Thank you. Thank you All right, sir, so you can continue. All right. So, as I was saying, we, we must realize that continuous improvement, change as a continuous improvement, like I mentioned in one of the nuggets, I said everybody who wants improvement is the change that we don't like. It's a sacrifice required to get improvement that is somehow difficult. I want to find body, but to wake up in the morning, you know, I set my alarm, I actually set an alarm, and the alarm is by my side, and then when, it, when the alarm rings, I, I, I turn and snooze it for the next 10 minutes. It rings after 10 minutes again. I turn and snooze it. 20 minutes gone, wasted. And perhaps I cannot drag my body and get up. And then I'm looking, oh, I'm supposed to have jogged from 6, 6 o'clock to 6.30. It's already 6, uh, 6.20 now. I can't jog for 10 minutes. So I postpone it to the next day. So then on a global level, I mentioned the China, the Chinese, the Japanese. The Japanese even went so far as to give us what we call Kaizen. The, kai, the, the Kaizen principle is a change towards perfection principle. It is a continuous improvement principle that says that no matter what you have invented, keep trying to better it. Do what you have done, let it be better than that which you did yesterday. Okay, somebody wrote a book uh, and he calls it the 10 times principle. And he said, for any goal that you set, for any effort that you want to put, look at the result and imagine you setting a goal 10 times higher. For instance, if you want to generate $1 million, set a goal to achieve $10 million. If you want to get the market, market uh, share, with your company, and you're looking at getting maybe 30%, or let's say, let's say you are looking at getting 1.5% of the market, okay? If you, and you know that 1.5% of the market will give you uh, sustainability. Then you have to get, you have to try to get 15%. If you want to get 30%, then you have to target getting 300%. So that even if you fall far below, it is most likely that you are going to achieve your goal. Research has shown that uh, 10,000 hours is like a magic number for sustaining any effort of whether practice in entrepreneurship, physical exertion, uh, uh, mental exertion. So change is necessary for us to fit into the global societal system. The society, whether we like it or not, is going to change. You and I are going to be either beneficiaries or victims of the change. Like when you do a, a SWOT analysis, SWOT, your strengths and weaknesses are yours to control and improve. They are the power that you have to mitigate or take advantage of the second part. The SW is your own. The OT, the OT is not yours. The opportunities and threats, it's your strengths and weaknesses that you use to work on the opportunities and threats because the opportunities are outside your control. They are emerging scenarios. If you happen to be born in an area where internet is available, it's an opportunity. There are people who were born in an area where there was no internet. If you were born in an area where we had steel, it's an opportunity. But you need to know the meaning of opportunity and you need to understand the meaning of threats. Threats are cause factors, causal situations that may result in adverse consequences. Any situation 
beyond your control that can result in adverse consequences, whether it's a policy, whether it's the weather, whether it's the human, the human resource or a human being, whether it's an event or whatever, is a threat. And the opposite is also true. Any situation that you can explore or even exploit with beneficial outcomes is an opportunity. But how well prepared you are is a different thing. So change is necessary for you to fit into the global societal change. As we woke up this morning, some of us woke up maybe around four o'clock, some by five, some by six, you know, some of us, we jogged, we came up, we took breakfast, you know, we tidied up our little, some of the things we need to do, we pray. Time, it never stops. It doesn't care whether you are angry, or you are sad, it just keeps moving. It doesn't even care, the time doesn't even care whether your, your work clock, is not showing whether your clock is off or on. It keeps going. It doesn't wait. And it is available for everybody. So change is very important to measure up with growing institutions, including government, industry, and finance. Change is important to increase your flexibility as an individual and as a corporation, society. Change is important to increase your effectiveness. Yes, you are efficient, but how effective are you? Like the question my friend asked me, he said, what have you achieved? Initially, I, 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 I was taken aback and I was like, this is when I look at it, it, it caused deep introspection. Effectiveness is hitting your goals. Not how fast you hit goals, but how well efficiency talks about how fast and at what cost you're able to hit your goal. But if let's talk about how well quickly did you hit it effectively? Did you did you did you hit the desired goal the way you wanted the education? Communication is a, is a two-way thing, and communication is not complete or effective on Till the message received by the intended recipient and decoded, affected by the person who coded that message or the sender, what we in communication we we'll call the coder. So this is very important. So then you you also need to change for personal capability and growth. And like I said, uh, we are human beings. We are the only animal, uh, 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 let me say, the only type of animal, because we have KPC OFGS, if you remember that acronym, you must be a science student. KPC OFGS, KPC OFGS. How many of us remember that acronym when we were in school? You know, this, you know, maybe 30, 20 years ago, you know, Kingdom, KPC, Kingdom, K stands for Kingdom, P stands for Phylum. C stands for class, O stands for O, F stands for family, and then S stands for what? Species. So that is how we broke down uh, in terms of uh, classification or taxonomy. You know, we try to define organisms, you know, we, we say which kingdom, then which phylum, then which class, you know, like now. Man, an animal, even though we call ourselves higher animal, okay? So, a ma mama, a ma 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 belong to the phylum mammalia, um, uh, genus, homos, uh, you know, like that, like that. You know, we're not in the biology class now. But what, try, what we're trying to say is that we are the only group of animals that have the ability to communicate effectively without ambiguity, we have, not, not that we succeed all the time, but we have the ability. We have the ability to write down our thoughts. We have the ability to, to change our minds, to change, to, to behave either rational or irrationally. We have the ability to, to think, reason. So personal capability and growth is an important facet 
is an important factor of change, why we should change. And then change is also important to cultivate better rapport in the workplace and the world around you. In those days, and even up till now, I think it's even gaining ground now, we used to have uh, finishing schools, you know, where you are taught conservative and modern ideas of how to dress, you know, how to tie your tie, how to um, greet a lady, how to receive your guests. When you sit down at the table, there are several sets of cutleries beside your, your food plate, and each one has a point to use. You, you, you need to know the one for the first course, the appetizer. You need to know the one to use for the main course. You need to, want, you need to know the one to use for the desserts. You need to know the one to use for, you know, for the light night. So many words. And then you need to know which hand holds your fork, which hand holds your knife. If you are right-handed, you can unmute yourself, sir. What we have added now is management. So it means that change, since change is constant, you have to learn to control it. You have to learn to take advantage of it. You have to learn to explore it and you have to learn to exploit it to your advantage. As an individual, as a unit or as a family unit or as a, as a group or a department, as an organization or even as a society. So what is the principle of change management? One, you must prepare for the unexpected. Do not limit your vision. Do not limit your vision. Um, Jeff Hyatt, founder of Husky, gave us what we call the ADCA model. And believe me, the ADCA model is very wonderful because we talk about change, organization change management. But he looks at it, he's, he's, he actually carried out um, his study in over 700 companies. But his purpose is not to look at change from the perspective of organization. He was looking at it from the perspective of the individual. And he was able to determine that, like we said earlier, if Organization is going to change. It has to change by changing individuals, individual mindset, individual attributes, individual capabilities. We have realized that the difference between a failing organization and a thriving organization is just a bunch of individuals. Look at those uh, those those girls that represented Nigeria in the in the uh, with the sled. Using the sled, you know, on the on the, the ice skating. Four of them. I was I was surprised, you know. And then before they now eventually got sponsors, you look at what, what they went through. And on YouTube today, you can you can see the, the, the glory they were able to bring to Nigeria. They were when they were celebrating that they brought out the Nigerian flag and and show it to the world. Show, you know, the, the the flag was was made alive, was brought alive to the, to the whole world. So prepare for the unexpected. Then learn to communicate change. As a change leader, speak to the individual or group, communicate the message. Don't mistake ambiguity for clarity. Don't mistake ambiguity for clarity. Ambiguity means that that thing that you said can be interpreted either this way or that way. Just like you have an ambidextrous person being somebody who can use those, his two hands perfectly. He can write with his left hand as well as he can write with his right hand. You know, he can play uh, table tennis or lawn tennis with his left hand as well as he can play with his right, with his right hand. You say it's such a person. So anybody who speaks in such a way that you can translate it or interpret it this way or that way is, is said to be speaking in ambiguous 
terms. So create ownership, willing to accept responsibility for making change happen. Then make the formal case, try the reason for change. Number one, prepare for the unexpected. ADCA, the ADCA model that I mentioned by Jeff Hyatt says, number one, you need A. He gave us a simple acronym, which we have, which has become very popular. I'm sure a lot of, a lot of us must have had ADCA, 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 ADCA. ADCA is Individual Change Management Process by Jeff Hyatt, the founder of Proski. And he said, first and foremost, you must be aware. You must be aware and understand why the change is necessary. That's the A. The D, he says, stands for desire. The D stands for what? Desire. You must, you must, you must hate uh, what is presently on ground for you, the current situation. You must be dissatisfied and you must want the new state. That is desire. So two things. First of all, I don't want what I'm going through now. And then this is what I'm actually, I actually want. That is all desire. Okay? Then number three, I, I said ADKA, right? A D K. Then K stands for knowledge. Knowledge is that you must have an idea of how to carry out that change. You remember uh, Professor De Bono? He talked about the six thinking hats for every assignment, for every exercise, for every project that you want to undertake. He said put up your thinking hat. And he gave the six, he gave six different colors. Color number one, he said the white hat, the hat of facts and figures, the hat of data. What do you even know about? Write everything that is a fact about it. Okay? That is the, the white hat. Then he said, you can also wear a black hat. The black hat is to look at every negative thing about that, uh, the purpose or the goal or the objective or the project. Every negative thing. We call it playing the devil's advocate. What can possibly go wrong? What could, if this thing happens? Like we want to, okay, let's assume now that we want to bring, let's assume in Nigeria now, um, we want to have 24 hour electricity. We want to industrialize and we give ourselves we give ourselves a timeline of 10 years. We want to eradicate insecurity. We want there to be liberty, true liberty that doesn't affect other people's liberty. Because when we talk about liberty, liberty means that my freedom does not overlap into your own zone of freedom so that I begin to terrorize you. The fact that I have, I have liberty to speak doesn't mean that I can say offensive words in the wrong place or to the wrong people because you are now infringing on their own. Okay? So now let's assume that we want to create that goal and say, okay, 24 hour electricity is what we want to do. Sorry for the breakdown in transmission. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> 